Hi, my name is Dave. Today I'm going to show you the uh, very interesting and rare Orion UltraScan 80 telescope. This is a, an 80 millimeter f6.25, about 500 millimeter focal length, and it was sold for just a very brief time, a couple of years, by Orion in the early 1990s. And the reason it's of interest to me is because I think in all respects it's identical to the Unitron RF-80. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's so close to being identical, I don't think you can find any distinguishing differences between this and the Unitron RF-80, which is a, a very, very rare telescope indeed. Let's have a close look at the label in this scope. Look, to my great surprise, this is in fact a Unitron RF-80. Look at that! I can't... Oh, 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 wait a minute. Oh. Yeah, it's just a cheesy label I printed out. <laughs> but I think in all other respects, this is identical to the Unitron. Okay, so maybe it's not my long sought after Unitron RF-80. Uh, the mythical unicorn type of Unitron. Anyway, um, this is not that, but I believe in all respects it's identical. I'm quite convinced the specifications are exactly the same, the timing is about right. Uh, so I believe that this is the same scope, just with a different brand name. That's not, a, not at all uncommon. Um, the idea that they had uh, ED glass in them was new at the time. This is the early 90s. And ED glass had, was just coming in right then. So anything with ED glass in it was considered to be quite spectacular. Nowadays it's commonplace and you can, you know, you of course pay a, a few dollars more for a, a, an acromat with ED glass. That's what this is advertised as. This is advertised as a super ED acromat, not an apochromat, uh, not totally color free, but with much less color. And in fact, I can uh, certainly state that in my experience, this scope and uh, the other scopes that have had that are of the same basic type, which is the University Optics uh, Kit Telescope, they all seem to be just beautiful. The optics are superb in those things. So, although this is not my uh, Unitron RF-80, it's as close as I'm probably ever going to get. Those of you with sharp eyes will have noticed that this block here isn't exactly right. As a matter of fact, this is not the original block. Uh, let me show you. Here's the original block that came off this very scope. Now, this thing, it's a very nice radius block. Um, somebody, for some reason or another, has hacked off, a, you know, maybe half an inch of it or so there. And, uh, it's really a pretty useful, serviceable kind of a radius block for mounting it. But it's got a couple of issues. One, it doesn't fit the mount that I would like to use with this scope. I would like to use a Unitron 114 Altaz mount, which is perfect for this kind of scope. Um, and this thing, the screw holes here are not perfectly set up for that. The spacing is just exactly wrong. Well, on this mounting block that I made, I put the screw holes, and you can see that the screw holes are right here. Now, there are a couple of studs that screw in here, one there, and one there. This will now mount on a Unitron 114 Altaz mount, which is ideal. So that's a nice solution. In addition to that, of course, it's got a couple of quarter inch 20 holes here for mounting on a regular tripod if you want. And in addition to that, it's um, it's already a, it's a Vixen dovetail, so it'll fit on a, anything that'll take a Vixen dovetail. So this makes it a more universal kind of a mount. I now have this scope mounted on a Unitron 114 mount. As you can see, it's a very fitting mount for this scope. Works wonderfully. Uh, the Unitron 114 mount is capable of holding a unit. It's designed to hold a Unitron 60 millimeter scope. Uh, but it's got enough power, you know, it's able to drive this thing okay. I wouldn't want to put anything much heavier than this on there. 
but it works fine and it's a, an ideal mount for a small scope like this. This only weighs about roughly four pounds or so, so it's working. It works just fine. Okay, so let's do a, uh, a little bit of a shootout here. Let's compare this scope with the Teleview Ranger. This is from about the same era. It's a 70 millimeter scope of about the same focal length. So this one has it beat in terms of aperture just a little bit. Uh, but uh, the Teleview Ranger is an ED scope. Uh, now remember back in the 90s, ED was a little bit shaky and some places, sometimes they'll, people will say this is really not an ED scope. It's an ED scope. It's made with ED glass, but ED glass back in those days wasn't as good as it is today. So uh, this is a fair comparison. This is about the same era. So let's do a shootout. As a matter of fact, I did the shootout with these two scopes against each other last night. I had one of those nights of extremely rare good seeing in Colorado. And uh, man, oh man, both of these scopes were delivering these beautiful images. Saturn was tack sharp. Uh, I couldn't believe I went up to 100 power and I thought, well, that's about as far as you're going to go with one of these. And then I realized that no, it was the scene was good enough. So I punched the power up to 150 power. I loaded on uh, some extra eyepieces and barlows and stuff. Anyway, these two scopes both performed beautifully at around 150 power. Um, wonderful scopes. Both scopes have a little bit of color. The Teleview Ranger uh, is an, um, you know, semi apochromat or ED achromat, something like that. Anyway, it's got a little bit of color in it. Um, not bad, not, not objectionable. I guess that's the main point. Uh, when I was using this at 150 power looking at Saturn, yeah, there was a little color around there and stuff, but the detail was crisp and sharp and the, the little bit of color was not distracting. And just about the same can be said for this scope. Uh, the color was slightly different. There's a little bit more color in this scope, but not much. And as a matter of fact, I stopped this down to 70 millimeters just to do a fair comparison. And this one still had just a tiny bit more uh, chromatic aberration, not much. Uh, and not so much as to be objectionable. Saturn, Jupiter was showing beautiful, lots of lines and festoons. And you could see uh, there was either a, there was a moon that's either silhouetted or a shadow of a moon crossing the surface of the planet. Beautifully visible in both of these scopes. Uh, I turned both scopes to the limb of the moon. The limb of the moon is a very good harsh test for chromatic aberration. Uh, I saw a little bit, just a little bit in the Teleview Ranger. On the edge of the moon, just a little bit of a color, like it had a real thin uh, bluish papal, uh, bluish purple kind of a, an atmosphere. Very, very thin. Uh, it was a little bit, there was a little bit more noticeable color in this scope. But um, both, both scopes, beautiful, absolutely great performing scopes. And these scopes will be uh, far better than your typical, like a short tube 80 or one of the more commonplace standard acromats. Both of these scopes will beat one of those just into the ground. In addition to comparing the Orion 80 millimeter scope with the Teleview Ranger 70 millimeter scope, I also compared it to this scope. Now, this is a really state of the art kind of stuff. This is an SV Boney, or I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Anyway, it's a modern ED, uh, I guess you call it Acromat still. It's got just a tiny bit of color. It doesn't have the fancy, real expensive FPL 53 glass. Uh, it's 51 or something. Anyway, it's not quite as sharp, not as quite as expensive, of course. Uh, but it's a nice little scope. And I tell you one thing, this thing has a beautiful image. It's superb. It's a perfect star test. Very little color, almost zero color. I mean, if you really, really strain, you can see just a little bit of color, but almost no color. For all practical purposes, this is a very close to perfect 70 millimeter scope. Now, it's also, it's on a nice modern 
Uh, this is a Vixen Mini Porta mount. Oh man, this is nice. Nice form factor, nice everything works well. Beautiful rotating focuser, two speed focuser, and that's, that's a nice advantage over that one. Which one is better? Well, honestly, I have to say that uh, aperture always wins. 80 millimeters, 70 millimeters. You can see just a little bit more in that scope, even though it has more color. So even though it, this has a little bit more chromatic aberration, the optics are so good, so sharp, you can see uh, uh, greater amounts of detail on the moon and planetary surfaces than with this. It's, I mean, it's, it's, we're picking nits here. Uh, the color is a little bit better on this one. And again, we're nitpicking because this is uh, almost, I mean, it's very little, not objectionable color at all. Anyway, um, for those of you that are still using some of the classic scopes, you're getting just about as much bang for the buck as you are with a modern outfit. I'm just about 100% certain this scope also was sold as the University Optics Kit Telescope. Now, as a kit telescope, it would have been unpainted, so forth and so on, but the optics would have been the same, focuser would have been, everyone, everything here would have been the same, um, except for the paint. Now, the University Optics Kit Telescope, I've owned a couple of those, and they were beautiful, just as good as this. The performance on all of these lenses is really, really, really good uh, for the era. Uh, don't compare them with a modern, you know, ED triplet apochromat or anything, but a really good scope for that price. In addition to that, and I'm not sure if the Orion, as it was sold at the base model, came with the adapter, but the uh, kit telescope did. This particular scope did not come with a two inch adapter. So I was uh, able to, in my sh machine shop, go in there and Put one of these together in uh, about an hour or so. I'm very happy to be able to do that kind of thing. It's really a nice option to be able to put together something like that. This two inch adapter now turns this into a nice big beefy, there's a nice rich field telescope for you. Uh, really low power is great for scanning the Milky Way or whatever. Really, really nice scope for those uh, those kinds of tasks. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at this Orion Ultrascan 80 telescope from the early 1990s. Thank you for watching.